What's up everyone, Jeremy here from mtgheadquarters.com and this is a Theros from the Sauce opening. I know I just did one recently, but the awesome people at MTG Card Market sent a box of Theros, a box of Born of the Gods, and a box of Journey into Nyx. And uh, I wanted to, I thought it would be a great time right now in the lull, kind of before spoilers come out in Counts of Uh By the way, if you guys want me to do spoiler videos, let me know. Because I'm pretty much always up at midnight when they come out. And uh, I'd be happy to go over the cards. I feel pretty confident in addressing whether or not cards uh, will at least be good and limited. Um, but they're going to be like screen capture, you know. So you guys let me know in the comment section down below. Also, please take a moment to check out the amazing people at mtgcardmarket.com. I will put their link in the description below. They've been huge supporters of the channel. Absolutely huge. There's no way we could deliver this much content without them. And uh, I'm so thankful. And and they say you guys are awesome too. They, they're constantly telling me, Jameson there is telling me, that people uh, come up to them at events and say, oh yeah, Thanks for helping out the HQ crew. So you guys keep doing that. Um, I got to meet them again when I was at uh, GP Chicago. Great guys. Foil keepsake Oregon. <laughs> and our very first rare is an Elspeth Suns champion. Wake up. All right. I mean, pretty much, it... let's just stop. Okay, so thanks for watching this video, guy. Okay, sorry. I mean, I don't see it going uphill from there, but, you know. Hey, a Boon Seder. All right, I'll take a Boon Seder. An upside down fanatic of Mogus. Elspeth Sun Champion and a Boon Seder. If I'm drafting, I'm feeling pretty good about white green. A foil Lightning Strike. And a Temple of Deceit. Wow. We're, we're, we're like. We're elbow deep in the sauce right away in the first three packs. Boon Seder, Sun, Elspeth, and Temple. I know Temple of Deceit isn't played as much as other temples, but, you know. All right, we're out of the sauce. Polis Crusher, absolutely great card for draft. Triple Theros was amazing. Theros Block, it was still really good. Chain to the Rocks, I'll take that. Happy to chain to the rocks. So I haven't decided what I'm going to play uh, for the new standard environment. For those of you that watch my stream... Oh, a Mythic Master of Waves. Holy cats. Um, neat. Uh, for those of you that watch my stream, I spent like $500 or $400 building my very first modern deck last week. And... It was a ton of fun. I played it three times that night, I think, and I went undefeated. <laughs> um, that doesn't mean anything. I played Reaper of the Wild. I think I played Red Green Tron. And I'm just learning these uh, these uh, modern deck names. I played Tron, and then I played uh, something else, but Bow of Nylia. The, the stream was helping me immensely because, especially with sideboard tech, because I basically took, I think, Reed Duke's base list. And uh, because, I mean, how do you start modern, right? I mean, I am a casual tryhard, Arbor Colossus. I'm a, a casual tryhard, which means uh, I don't play all the time, but when I want to play, when I play, I want to win. And so I knew, and Thuza. I knew that I had I needed a semi-competitive deck that you didn't have to be like masterful at piloting. I'm not saying it's easy to run. I'm just saying many times it requires fewer decisions. Somebody in the stream said Ember Swallower. Somebody in the stream said something like play your creature, put pants on it, and turn them sideways, or something something like that. Which or put something on it, I don't know. But put enchantments on it, basically. And that is kind of what it uh, boils down to. Daxos and Melodus. 
But uh, I really fought building this modern deck. You guys kept telling me I needed to play modern, and you're right. I had a ton of fun, way more fun than I have in standard. I even went and bought like some unhinged lands or something. Yeah, unhinged land. Timeret. Uh, so that I could, with my single forest that I play in that deck. But I really fought buying those. Um... Oh, okay, Ashiok. All right, all right. That's all right. I'm cool with the Planeswalker. Um, because I just know they're going to be reprinted soon and they're just going to plummet. But fortunately on MTGO, they're like 30 bucks. Ooh, Temple of Mystery. Like Misty's were like 30 bucks, I think, instead of like 200 bucks or whatever the heck they are on paper. 100 bucks. So, you know, it's a little easier. That's one reason I like MTGO, Agent of the Fates. And maybe I'll do a vlog of uh, why I decided to just go digital in terms of the collection that I'm going to build and play. Foil Staunch Hunter Warrior and a Steam Augury. It's just easier for me. I mean, my day job does not allow me just time to like go on GP, you know, grind GPs or whatever, Labyrinth Champion. I, I mean, it was actually a major, I mean, it was totally worth it. Don't get me wrong. I met a lot of new friends at GP Chicago. I wish I could do that kind of stuff like every weekend. Um, but the reality is I can probably only do it a couple times a year, which it's probably like most of you too. Soldier of Pantheon, of the Pantheon. Quietly, we've slipped out of the sauce and into the ether. Um, so... Ordeal of Heliod, shiny, gift of immortality. So I kind of had to decide, well, where am I going to invest in a modern deck? Where am I going to invest? I'm going to invest in a... I've been fortunate enough in my Vintage Masters pulls to find most of the power. Night Howler. So I get to, you know, I can build a Vintage deck. So I'll end up with a Vintage deck, a modern deck, and anything I need to build standard by kind of committing to MTGL. Shipbreaker Kraken. And I know I've been like one of the very loudest out people who are outspoken who don't love the new client. And I still don't love a lot about it. But the fact of the matter is, ooh, Temple of Silence. Fact of the matter is, it it's not going away. I mean, Wizards make way too much money selling digital cards. I mean, what a racket, huh? <laughs> Foil Viper's Kiss. I don't think we've seen our Foil Rare yet, and that's okay. Fleeceman Lion. All right. So thanks again, uh, mtgcardmarket.com. Please uh, go check them out. Anger of the Gods. This could see some play sooner. Could come back, I mean, be a bigger force as some of that great removal rotates out. And uh, Bind of Thassa. You know what we haven't seen is... How about a Thassa? Or how about... Does anybody really play any of the gods anymore? I don't think so, huh? Medomi of uh, the Ageless. Not of the... Well, as, as predicted, we have kind of cooled off here. But that's okay. Pelucranos, all right, back-to-back -back mythics. That's not to be ignored. And Pelucranos is good. Happy to have it. Our foil rare is a Sylvan carry added. All right, I'll take that. I think they had a promo of it, though, I'm pretty sure. All right. And a hero's downfall. Okay, that's a good pack. Maybe we've woken back up here. I still think we could. We've only got like six packs left. I think we can still find some sweet pulls. Oh, selling carry added. Okay. I probably will still build a modern deck or a standard paper deck 
So I really want to go to F and M's. I think it'd just be good for me to go. Reverend Hunter. There's a lot of reasons, but um, most of them involve like the alternative on Friday nights. I end up going to the bar, doing something stupid, and it'd just be better, I think, to just go play Magic. Hundred-handed one. So I hope you guys are uh, having fun with these Just the Sauce openings. Seems to be my most popular series. And I totally understand why. Prognostic Sphinx. Um, but we have all of the Cons of Tarkir openings coming up. I've got a surprise like new website unveiling coming up for you guys. I'm also working on that app, A Crow and Horse. All right, last two packs. Let's let's summon Elspeth's Luck. We already found our foil rare, but maybe we can find a pre-release rare. <laughs> All right, last pack. Come on, guys. If you uh, are brand new to the channel, please take a moment to subscribe. I do all the openings. I'm going to be doing spoilers uh, for Karns of Tarkir. MTG Headquarters is going to have its very own exclusive spoiler. And we're going to finish with a Scryland. Okay, fine by me. Um, very solid box, you know, right right down the middle of the road. Uh, Temple of Triumph is good. Sylvan Caryatid, Heroes Downfall. Foil Sylvan Caryatid. Pelurikonos is good. Uh, I mean, in terms of, you know, you want to have these cards that are worth a little bit of bucks. Fleece Main Line, Temple of Silence. Uh, Temple of Mystery, Ashiok. It's just a fun Planeswalker to pull in draft. Pack one, pick one. There's, in my opinion, other than the M14 Jace, this is a super fun do. Uh, Master of Ways, Chain of the Rocks, very good. Temple of Deceit, Boon Seder, and Elspeth. So just a really nice assortment of rares in this box. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe so you get notified immediately when I upload all of the spoilers for Cons of Tarkir. And we'll talk to you again real soon. I really hope you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already, check out some of our most popular playlists from MTG Vlogs, sick gameplay videos, new product breaks, and some insane vintage openings. I upload three to four new Magic the Gathering videos every week, so if you haven't already, please take a moment to crush that subscribe button to join one of the fastest growing Magic the Gathering channels on YouTube. Talk to you later.